A common misunderstanding among those who study the Bible is believing that all sins are equal in the eyes of God. However, this is not true. The Bible makes it clear that not all sins have the same weight, and consequently, there are different punishments for each type of sin. Many believe that all sins are equal, but this interpretation can lead to the false idea that certain sins do not have serious consequences. It is crucial to understand that all sins, regardless of their severity, are offensive to God and deserve infinite and eternal punishment. All sin results in separation from God and, if not repented of, leads to eternal punishment. Although all sins can lead to hell, divine tolerance varies depending on the severity of the sin. Not all sins are equally serious. For example, mass murder is not equivalent to telling a little lie. Both are sins, but they belong to different categories. Some sins are more serious, affecting both the individual and the community in severe ways, and so there are different punishments for different sins, just as in the human justice system. As we study the Bible, especially the books of Proverbs and 1 Corinthians, it becomes clear that sexual sins are especially dangerous. Proverbs suggests that some individuals may not recover from the repercussions of sexual sins, highlighting their severe impact compared to other types of sin. Sexual sin affects the body, mind, soul, and most importantly, eternity. Underestimating this type of sin is irresponsible and dangerous, as it is addictive and insidious. Sexual sin can consume your thoughts and distort your values, leading to a cycle of guilt and secrecy that is difficult to break. It can ruin relationships, sow distrust and betrayal, and cause permanent damage to professional and social lives. Fornication is one of the most common sexual sins. Many believers wonder why their desire for sin does not disappear after salvation. Being saved does not mean you will not be tempted to sin. Receiving the life of Christ transforms your spirit, but your body still lives in the world. Being born again does not eliminate carnal desires. Temptation is part of the ongoing struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Being tempted does not mean you are a false Christian. Acting on temptation is what constitutes sin. The Bible, in Galatians 5, 19, 21, lists the works of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, discord, dissensions, factions, envy, murder, drunkenness, orgies, and so on. Similar to these, those who commit such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornication and adultery are the first sins listed. Adultery will be covered later, but let's focus now on fornication. Your body desires sex because you are human, and sex, within the confines of marriage between a man and a woman, is not necessarily evil. God created sex to be enjoyed within these limits. The reason works of the flesh include adultery and fornication is that both, they are incorrect methods to seek something natural. Being born again does not mean you will never be tempted to fornicate or commit adultery. 1 Corinthians 6.16 says that whoever joins himself to a prostitute becomes one body with her, for the two will become one flesh. This means there is a deep spiritual connection beyond the physical union, reflecting the unity intended for marriage. When two people involved in fornication have a tumultuous relationship, it can be difficult to separate, as there is a connection that transcends the physical. Even after physical separation, the spiritual and emotional connection can last for years. This spiritual union means that, in a way, these people are married in the spiritual world. Fornication creates a deep connection between individuals, making separations painful. A part of you remains intertwined with the other person, and this connection can last for a long time, requiring a deliberate process of spiritual healing and recovery. Continuing, adultery is the second sexual sin that deserves our attention. The Bible defines adultery as a sexual relationship outside of marriage, and its consequences are devastating both spiritually and socially. Adultery not only destroys trust and fidelity in marriage, but also violates the sanctity of the God-ordained marriage bond. Jesus highlighted the seriousness of adultery when he stated in Matthew 5.28 that Whoever looks at a woman with an impure mind has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This emphasizes that sin begins in the heart and mind, 
before it even manifests itself in actions. Adultery is not only a physical betrayal, but also an emotional and spiritual betrayal, which can devastate entire homes and families. The effects of adultery are profound and lasting. It sows distrust, causes intense emotional pain, and can lead to the breakdown of families. Furthermore, adultery compromises the individual's relationship with God, as it goes against the divine principles of fidelity and purity. Restoration after adultery requires sincere repentance, forgiveness, and a conscious effort to rebuild trust and integrity. The third sexual sin we need to consider is lust. Lust is an intense and uncontrolled desire, usually sexual in nature. While sexual desire itself is not wrong, lust becomes sinful when it is indulged and unbridled, leading to thoughts and behaviors that dishonor God and others. The Bible warns us about the dangers of lust in several passages. In 1 John 2.16 we read that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but of the world. Lust is a form of greed that turns the heart and mind away from God, fueling desires that can lead to serious sins such as fornication and adultery. Fighting lust requires spiritual discipline and an ongoing commitment to purity. Jesus advises us in Matthew 5:29 to take drastic action against lust, saying that if your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and cast it away from you, for it is better that one of your members perish than your whole body thrown into hell. This should not be taken literally, but as a call to take serious action against sinful desires. To overcome lust, it is essential to fill your mind with the Word of God, seek the help of the Holy Spirit, and maintain a constant relationship of prayer. Daily surrender to God and seeking His holiness are crucial to resisting temptation and living a life that honors the Lord. In short, sexual sins, fornication, adultery, and lust are particularly destructive and demand our attention and vigilance. They affect not only our relationship with God, but also our interpersonal relationships and our spiritual integrity. Recognizing the seriousness of these sins and seeking divine help to overcome them is essential to living a life that pleases God. Do not underestimate the impact of sexual sins. They are powerful traps that can destroy your life and your future. But remember, with sincere repentance, God's grace is available to all of us, offering forgiveness and restoration. Be vigilant, seek holiness, and trust in the Lord's strength to resist temptations. In addition to fornication and adultery, the third sexual sin we must consider is pornography. Pornography is a modern problem that has deep roots in the same sinful desires that the Bible warns about. By consuming pornographic material, a person fuels lust and reinforces behaviors that distort the healthy, God-given view of sexuality. Pornography is especially harmful because it is easily accessible and can quickly become addictive, trapping a person in a cycle of shame and isolation. Jesus warns us about the dangers of looking at someone with impure intent, and pornography does just that. It fuels impure intent and turns natural sexual desire into disordered, sinful behavior. The effects of pornography are devastating for both the individual and their relationships. It can lead to a devaluation of real relationships, create unrealistic expectations about intimacy, and cause serious mental health problems such as depression and anxiety. Spiritually, pornography separates a person from God as it goes against the principle of purity that the Bible teaches. The fight against pornography requires a multifaceted approach. It is important to seek professional help if necessary, in addition to strong spiritual support. Filling the mind with the Word of God, as mentioned in Philippians 4, 8, where we are encouraged to think about everything that is true, noble, righteous, pure, lovely, and of good report, is a crucial step in renewing the mind and removing impure thoughts. Additionally, practicing spiritual disciplines such as prayer and fasting can strengthen resistance against temptation. The Christian community also plays a vital role in this process, offering support and accountability. Connecting with other believers who are struggling with or have overcome pornography can provide encouragement and practical strategies for overcoming this addiction. 
It is essential to recognize that the battle against sexual sins is not easy, but with God's grace, victory is possible. The first step is to admit the struggle and seek help. Remember the words of 1 Corinthians 10.13, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to men. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will, He will even provide a way of escape so that they can endure it. Finally, remaining firm in faith and trusting in the Lord's strength is fundamental to overcoming challenges. As you draw closer to God and seek to live according to His principles, you will find not only liberation, but also an abundant and peaceful life, as promised in John 10.10. 10. Sexual sins are, without a doubt, one of the most insidious and destructive traps we face. However, the good news is that there is hope and redemption available to all of us. God's grace is sufficient to forgive us and enable us to live a life of holiness. So, be vigilant, seek help when necessary, and trust in God's grace and power to overcome. Sexual sins are, without a doubt, one of the most insidious and destructive traps we face. They attack our integrity, destroy relationships, and turn us away from God. However, the good news is that there is hope and redemption available to all of us. God's grace is sufficient to forgive us and enable us to live a life of holiness. Here is some additional information and guidance for dealing with these sins. The Path to Redemption and Healing Sincere Repentance the first step to healing and restoration is sincere repentance. Repentance means recognizing the mistake, feeling true sadness for the sin committed and deciding to change direction. As 1 John 1 9 assures us, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confessing our sins to God and asking for forgiveness is crucial to reconciliation with Him. Renewal of the Mind the battle against sexual sins begins in the mind. Romans 12.2 exhorts us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This involves replacing impure thoughts and carnal desires with thoughts that honor God. Meditating on scripture such as Philippians 4.8 helps us focus on all that is true, noble, righteous, pure, lovely, and of good report. Spiritual strengthening Cultivating an intimate relationship with God is vital. This can be done through constant prayer, reading the Bible and participating in a Christian community. Prayer is a powerful tool that connects us directly with God, strengthening us and giving us wisdom to resist temptations. Fasting can also be a useful spiritual practice to focus on God and draw strength from Him in times of weakness. Community support. Don't face this battle alone. Engage with other Christians who can offer support and accountability. Bible study groups, pastoral counseling, and faith-based recovery programs are valuable resources. James 5.16 encourages us to confess our sins to one another and pray for one another so that we can be healed. Barriers and Protections Placing practical barriers and protections is an effective strategy. This may include installing internet filters to block inappropriate content, avoiding situations that could lead to temptation, and having an accountability partner to help keep you on track. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hope and Redemption Understanding Grace Understanding and accepting God's grace is fundamental. Ephesians 2, 8-9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. God's grace is an undeserved gift that gives us the opportunity to start over. Even when we fail, His love and forgiveness are always available to us. Testimony and Service once we experience healing and restoration, we can use our testimony to help others who are struggling. Sharing our experiences can bring encouragement and hope to those who are facing the same battles. Additionally, serving in ministries that deal with these issues can be a way to give back and help build the body of Christ. Life in Holiness Living a life of holiness is the ultimate calling for all believers. 1 Peter 1 15-16 exhorts us, 
But just as he who called you is holy, so be you holy in all your conduct. For it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Seeking holiness involves a daily surrender to God and an ongoing commitment to live according to His principles. Sexual sins are powerful, but God's grace is even more powerful. With repentance, renewal of mind, spiritual strengthening, community support, and a deep understanding of grace, we can overcome these challenges. God is always ready to forgive us, restore us, and guide us into a life of purity and holiness. Be vigilant, seek help when necessary, and trust in God's grace and power to overcome. Sexual sins are, without a doubt, one of the most insidious and destructive traps we face. They attack our integrity, destroy relationships, and turn us away from God. However, the good news is that there is hope and redemption available to all of us. God's grace is sufficient to forgive us and enable us to live a life of holiness. Sexual sins, such as fornication, adultery, and lust, are significant challenges in the life of a Christian. They have the power to devastate relationships, cause emotional and spiritual suffering, and turn us away from God. However, through sincere repentance, renewing the mind and spiritual strengthening, we can find healing and redemption. It is crucial to understand that the battle against these sins is not fought alone. The Christian community provides vital support, and God's Word provides the guidance needed to overcome these temptations. Placing practical barriers and seeking professional help when necessary are important steps toward maintaining purity and holiness. Hope and redemption lies in understanding and accepting God's grace. Your love and forgiveness are always available, offering us the opportunity to start over. By sharing our struggles and victories, we can help others find the same path to healing. Remember, with God's grace, there is no sin that cannot be forgiven, and there is no life that cannot be restored. Be vigilant, seek help when necessary, and trust in God's strength and power to overcome. Living in holiness is an ongoing commitment, but with divine help, it is fully achievable. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more inspiring content. May God bless your journey of faith and purity.